If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask that you turn to Daniel. Uh, Daniel chapter 1 is where we'll be reading from this morning. Daniel chapter 1. Uh, as you're turning there, I would ask, as always, that uh, uh, you pray for me, uh, finding the, Lord, uh, the Lord's will uh, in preaching is everything. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried unto the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the, and the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seeds and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand to the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Ju Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah unto whom the princes of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But David purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank, Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for all your goodness and watch care. We thank you for a church to attend, Lord. We thank you for the provision of a church here in Dover, Tennessee, Lord, and that you would sustain us in the years ahead. God, we thank you to be in your house on the first day of a new year, Lord, that we might proclaim your praises and give you honor and glory uh, for simply being who you are and where you are on your throne beside the Lord God of heaven. Bless this word to the hearts of your hearers. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now we'll be preaching this morning on dedicating yourself to the Lord. Uh, now, you parents and grandparents, you listen to me, and if you don't get anything else out of the message this morning, get this. The world wants your children. The world wants your children. They desire them. Uh, uh, that's the way the public school is bent in the direction it, it, that they are in. They want to train your children. They want to make them uh, where gender no longer matters. In fact, where gender don't even exist. They want, uh, they want to make them into a lawless people that do not honor God. They want your children. And I believe in 2023, sometimes we almost forget, you know, why we started homeschooling is to protect our children. It, it was to uh, give them an environment to learn. And we're going to find through the text that the government was the one that wanted all this to happen. So, first of all, I ask you individually, how are you dedicated to the Lord? What do you, in other words, your dedication to the Lord, how does it impact your life on a daily basis? Not on the Lord's day, but on a daily basis. When you go uh, to work, when you go to the supermarket, when you talk on the phone, 
That's really who you are, is it not? That, that, that's your real self. That, that is uh, your private self. And, and so we find these are the items that, that are wanted by the world. Now, I want you to see it begins in the third year of the reign of Jehoiada King, Jehoiakim, King of Judah. Now, uh, sometimes that seems trivial, and if you rush through it, it will, but I want you to remember the reason that it makes that statement because this was the years of the divided kingdom when Judah and, and, and Israel uh, were not together. They were not in unison. They, uh, Judah wanted to serve God at least for a while, and Israel did not, so they divided as a nation. And Judah was the one at one time that wanted to serve God. You know what? We live in a divided nation today. We really do. We live in a nation where there are so many agendas that you don't even know what, what's going on anymore. Where there are so many ideas about government that, that, uh, that it is mind-boggling what people will do. So we live in a very hard day. We live where clarity, not because of the Word of God, but because of the world that we're in, where clarity is very obscure. You, you, know what, uh, you know what the world wants to teach you? That the Bible isn't straight on a couple of things. It wants to tell you that the Bible says two different things. Uh, just, just know this, the Bible never ever says two different things, it's always consistent. And, and we as the Lord's people uh, need to understand that. So we, they, this began in a divided nation, very much like ours. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into, Jer into Jerusalem and besieged it. Now, I want you to see each and every one of our homes, this church, uh, the truths that are stood for is being besieged. Now, the good thing about a bese being besieged or attacked by a nation, you can see them coming. You can understand. Over on the way from Bumpusville this morning, we were talking about uh, demonically possessed people. And in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, uh, like uh, like uh, 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 the one that was uh, possessed with, uh, with uh, 10,000 devils came, it was very obvious that he was possessed. It was very obvious that he had a demon in him. In the modern day, and even at some time then, the devil's much too wise for that. You know, the Bible says this of Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene of whom... Uh, Jesus cast out seven devils. She, we never seen documentation that she was mean, that she would attack people, and yet and still she had seven devils in her. And, and uh, we find that the nature of man in 2023 is, is just that way. The devils are still present, but they're coy. They're easy to hide. They're, they're, they're not presented like this. And we see the results is being attacked. Um, and they attack us individually. They attack us as families. They attack us as churches. And they, uh, they, they want to get us down. Uh, verse 2, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah unto his hand uh, uh, with part of the vessels of the house of God. Now, I want you to see that God's sovereignly in control, but he gave control. He, he took Judah deliberately. He gave it to Jehoiakim. He, he was the one behind it. You know, we, we look, oh, the devil did that. No, no, you don't give too much credit to the devil because, listen, there's not one thing you can do outside the almighty God of heaven's direction. Right? You remember when he attacked Job? He said, you can go this far, but you're not going any further. See, that's the God we serve. It is not a God that's 
uh, fighting against the devil. It's a God that has a, the devil on the leash, and when it's not, uh, and when he gets out of line, he just pulls him back. That's the God of the Bible. And so we see very deliberately that the nation of Judah goes down at the very hand of God. And you know what? Uh, I don't know that they even perceive that. that. That God actually used Jehoiakim to bring them down because of their sin. And so what is their response? I also want you to see that Jehoiakim wanted the vessels out of the house of God. Now, the vessels in the house of God were instruments developed precisely according to the direction of Moses by the Almighty God of heaven, used in the daily sacrifice, used in the annual sacrifice uh, for specific jobs, for specific purposes, and some of them only used one time a year and then put up and not used again to the next year. That was how specific he wanted the vessels. You know what the devil wants? He wants your vessels. Mm -hmm. He wants your vessels. Not only your children, but if you have ability to speak, he wants that. Mm -hmm. If you have the ability to sing, he wants that. If you have the uh, ability to lead, he wants that. He wants your vessels. And, and a lot of people say, well, I can't do nothing. Well, I, I've never believed that because I've seen some very skilled people in different things. Like, well, I can't do anything. A lot of times you don't know what you can do, but they're, they're there. And the devil wants your vessels. He wants them for his own to do what he would have them to do with. Now, you can see in the next verse what he does with them is take them down to his very own temple. He wants them for false worship. Notice what it says, uh, uh, the rest of verse 2, uh, which he carried unto the land of Shinar to the house of his God. Now, he didn't just tear them up and destroy them and grind them and throw them away. He took them down to the idolatry, the idolatry temple and used them in the service of his God. You, you know what? Uh, you know what the devil wants of you? He's much too sly to get you running around a hexagon somewhere. He wants you somewhere else. Look around Dover today. How many sound churches are there in Dover? Uh, I could even in the city limits, I couldn't even begin to guess. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Eight in the little tiny town limits of Dover. That, that's where the false vessels are put. That, that's what he wants to do. Take us from a good, sound place in learning and put them something else. He wants our vessels. Parents, he wants your children. He wants your children for himself. And that way he could do whatever he wants to. So they, they uh, took the vessels that had been dedicated to God, who had been used in God's services, who had always been there, and put them in an idolatrous temple, and that was his plan. Next, in verse 4, what does he want? He wants children. Do you know what the devil wants? He wants your children. Notice it says in verse 3, And the king spake unto uh, Ashpenaz, the master of his, of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Now, uh, most people don't even realize what a eunuch is. A eunuch is uh, a man that cannot father children, and it, and they, and it becomes that way on intent. And that is a pagan custom as well. And so they wanted these units that uh, they wanted God's children in the eunuch band. Remember when uh, uh, the, the eunuch that is spoken of uh, had the word of God before him and said, uh, uh, and uh, Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? 
And he said, how can I accept some God, one God made? That, that's the kind of people that he was speaking of. And so that's again an impact on gender and an impact saying, hey, it don't matter anymore. That's who he wanted with. And the king spake unto uh, Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, and that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Now notice what he wanted. He wanted the government and he wanted religion. That's the two areas this false king wanted. You know what the, the devil wants this morning? He wants the government and he has it. I mean, say what we will and vote how we will. The devil's got it. He has got our government. Now he wants the children. Now he's turned his eye in that direction. Keep your children safe, people. Keep your children safe. And, and, and so we find that he very deliberately goes to his next plan. Verse 4, these are the ones he wants. Children in whom was no blemish. In other words, the best of the best. They looked good. They were nice young people. They had no uh, indication of leprosy. They, they were healthy, whole, sound children. Make them physically good. You get those for me. Children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored, attractive children. And skillful in all wisdom. See, he wants uh, he wants an intelligent child. He wants a good-looking child so that he can impact people around him. And we're going to see he takes them down to his place to train them in the way of the world. Do you, you know what uh, you know what children get down at the schoolhouse? They get trained in the way of the world. That, that's the end result. That, that is, uh, and, and, and you know what? Uh, you get what you buy. You know what I'm saying? If that's, where, if that's what you committed to, then you're going to get the result. The end result is what you're going to receive. Notice also, he wanted to take them out of their environment and put them in his environment. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that is what the devil wants for your children as well. And quite honestly, he'll take you as well. He'll take you out of your environment where you're comfortable and you know the word of God is going to be preached and put you over here in a different environment. And, and so we find that that's always been the devil's plan. He wanted well-nurtured people. He wanted good-looking people. He wanted them so that they could impact others. He wanted them to be smart people, an understanding of science. Now, uh, the way I talk, y'all are probably very, very surprised, especially the Andersons. I do have a degree, a bachelor's of science degree in nursing. I had more science classes than I had anything else. And uh, sometimes I would just want to openly laugh at my instructors. Uh, do you really expect me to believe that? And uh, 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 I was, uh, I killed my turtle. I didn't mean to. We, we had these little turtles. Yeah, they wouldn't do this today, but they split the turtle open before he got to class and pulled his chest apart and the heart, they hooked to a fish hook. And you could take all your mainline drugs and drip them on the heart, and it would respond just like ours do. And I flatlined mine. It wasn't intentional. Uh, but they were like going, isn't this amazing? They were like, do you see, uh, do you, do you see the science behind that? And I looked at my lab partner and said, no, I see the hand of God behind that. And it's they want you in an environment where you only learn their agenda. And that was 30 years ago. So we, we find then that this is, not, this is not a new approach. It's the same approach. But he wanted them out of their environment and away from their home. He wanted them in a separate place. He wanted the smart ones. He wanted the good-looking ones. He wanted people that would stand with him. 
Notice this. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now, learning to speak Chaldean wasn't the problem. Learning the ways of the Chaldeans was the problem. They wanted them to look, act, and present like a Chaldean. A Chaldean. You remember how Joseph was, and Joseph's such a man of God. By the time his brothers got back down there, he was second in command. Remember that? He looked and acted like an Egyptian. He presented like an Egyptian. He dressed like an Egyptian. For all intents and purposes, he was an Egyptian. That's what the world wants for you. That, that, and, and, and the days that are ahead, that's what they want. So they wanted to steal the children and, and put them in an environment and then no doubt send them back and tell them that the Chaldean God was better than their God. Verse 5, and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. Now we get down to the essential part of it, and that's the diet that we eat, not just children, all of us, the diet that we eat on a daily basis. Now, uh, uh, my, my diet is not nearly as healthy as it should be. I should be eating food that's better for me, but how's your spiritual diet? What do you watch on the TV? What do you watch on your phones? What do you, what do, you uh, do in your leisure time? What are you eating spiritually? See, he was going to give them the best of the best. The meat that went on the king's table and the wine that went on the king's table. Now, remember this. There's nothing intrinsically wrong about wine. If I believed that, I would not be a wine person for the Lord's table. But, you know what? People use it wrong, do they not? When people drink too much and get drunk, that's, but that's when the Bible says that you're not to do that. But, have these young people, and they were going to get nurtured by wine and the king's diet. You know, you know what we're getting on a daily basis from the TV and from our phones primarily in 2023? We're getting the king's diet. Mm -hmm. This is what they want us to have. Mm -hmm. And we slop it up like pigs and slop, right? And, and so we find in the modern day, watch what you eat. Look at what's going on. Even in the news, don't believe it just because they say it. So he's going to give them good meat and wine. And notice, so nourishing them three years at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now, how many of you have ever been on a diet for three years? Does everybody raise their head at the same time? Right? I haven't either. Usually, I, 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 I make no New Year's resolutions because I usually break them by the 5th or 6th. Uh, but you probably have been and didn't know it. You're eating a diet every day. What comes through your phone, what comes through the news channels, what comes through uh, every part of your life. That's your diet. That's what you're eating. That's what you're receiving. That's what you're getting. And you know what? You will respond to it. Now, I think it's interesting. They said, just give us three years. How many, kid, how many, how, how many years is, your, is the average child in the public school? That's a lot more than three years, isn't it? Most, just basic education, K through 12, that's 13 years. Now, uh, uh, when I started the school, I, went, I started going to school when I was four. It's called Head Start. So when I graduated over here, I'd already been in that system for 14 years. Then I went a year to EMT school, 15, and then I went four and a half years to UT Martin. That's 20 years 
in the public system. See, that's what, that's what they can make. If God does not save that person, they can make anything they want to out of your children in 20 years. Is that not fearful? Is that not scary? Uh, and, and, and so we find how much time in 2023 are you going to give unto Christ, not just in your parenting, but you yourself individually, is your diet going to consist of Christ? Now, I don't know about you, but pretty much every day I eat. Uh, I eat because I'm hungry, and it, it's a lot of different things that I eat every day, but I always eat something, right? And we always eat something spiritually too, whether we know it or not. So don't you think it's smart to eat deliberately, to, to eat with knowledge, to eat saying, okay, spiritually, what does this do for me? And, and I, I'm not going to say any names, but I knew a fairly sound Baptist one time, and it never ceased to amaze me. Now, I wanted to roll my eyes. He got a Campbellite newsletter every month. And I, I said, what did you do? Start the fire with it? Why, why would you want that? Well, just want to know what they believe. I was like, well, I'll tell you what they believe. Throw that thing away. See, it didn't need to be in his diet, did it? That wasn't part of his spiritual food. We need, we need rich spiritual food. In 2023, we need to stick with the Bible. And if you like to read commentaries, get men that truly believe something. Men that, that were committed to the cause of Christ. But I'll say this, and commentaries are fine. I do better with the Word of God. I do a whole lot better with just the Bible. And, and so we find then that uh, they... They had a plan for these kids. Verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Now, I think it's interesting, at least. I don't know if it's a good thing or not. But the three children that are named here, why do we know their Chaldean names better? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A child can tell you that, right? But I remember when the crash name there, it's not the youngest, but the next and youngest boy, Hananiah. And uh, Bert says, Larry, what was his, what was his uh, other name? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and I, I, I was just being honest. See, we want what the world gets, do we not? Those Chaldean names, whether we want to know it or not, whether we accept it or not, they, they're more familiar. They sound better, right? That they're, they're more appealing, appealing to the flesh. And, and so we find that these, uh, their plan, first of all, was to change their name. Now, you think about in the modern day, what was the church at Corinth called? Church right? Where did Baptists come in? When, when did we start being known as Baptist people? Well, I can tell you, uh, they called us first Anabaptists or against Baptists because we would not baptize infants. You're against baptism. And then later the Anna was dropped and they just called us Baptists. But uh, I say that to say this. There's a lot with a name, is it not? Now we have to put all the identifiers, sovereign grace, landmark, independent, you know, and on and on we go. Well, what's in a name? See, we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and be committed to our name. <laughs> And everybody else called them by their Chaldean name. But, but, you know, I think it's interesting in Daniel, how many people knew, except my son, that Belshazzar was his Chaldean name? Somehow Daniel kept his, didn't he? 
You, you don't people identify people and say, oh, yeah, Belshazzar, I know him. We know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, though, don't we? See, Daniel claimed his name in heaven. Are you going to do the same thing? Is being a Christian and being a Baptist part of what's important to you? Are you going to claim it in 2023? Is that going to be part of who you are? And, and so we see that they refused this diet. Verse 7, And to whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for the, they gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, that Daniel was responsible. He purposed himself. Now, see, sometimes we want to take sovereign grace way too far, don't we? Listen, I'll tell you this. It's never the purpose of God for you to be a rebel, and it's not, and it's not God's sovereignty when you are, right? And so Daniel said, as committed as he could, I'm not going to eat that mess. You know, we as the Lord's people, we need to be that way in 2023. Just say, I'm not going to eat that mess. I'm not going to get involved in big eyes, little U's. I'm not going to get involved in uh, politics and all the junk that's going on there. I'm going to feast on, at the king's table. I'm going to feast on the word of God. I'm not going to be interested in this diet. And you know, what happens when you're on the diet? Well, a lot of things happen. I get irritated, first of all. Right? But one or two things happens. If you stick with it, it's going to impact you and you're going to lose a little weight, maybe for a little while. That's usually how mine goes. Or if you, if you blow and say, just forget about it, and you pig out, eat all you want, you're going to gain weight, right? Both have impacts in your life, do they not? Both of them are pretty obvious, are they not? You look at somebody and tell them they've lost weight. You can look at, Bella lost 11 pounds in a week. You could look at that kid and say, man, she's lost a lot of weight. Same way with us. But you know what you can tell even better? What someone's eating spiritually. Because how they talk, how they dress, what they do is a very good indicator of what they're eating spiritually. Right? What they're doing spiritually. And, and so Daniel said, I'm not going to be involved in it. I'm not, I'm not going to eat this stuff. I'm not going to drink this stuff. I'm going to spend my time with the Lord. Verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear the Lord, I fear my Lord the king, whom hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should you see your faces worse liking and the children of your sort? Then shall he make me and then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Now I want you to see that they looked for results. And, and, and if, you, if you think about the diet that they stayed on, it was essentially like an oatmeal. Now, I don't know about you, I could eat my oatmeal with lots of sugar and, and lots of butter. That's my favorite way to eat it. By then, all your, all your benefits is gone, right? But he says, this nasty stuff, this pottage you want to eat, wanting to eat is going to mess you up physically. You know what? That's what the world says about that book in your lap. You keep believing that stuff, you still, you keep going in that stuff, it's going to mess you up. You won't have no friends. You won't, you won't, you know, years ago when me and Donna decided to homeschool, Adam went to kindergarten. We's, not, we's done. We'll have enough of that. Didn't know what we was going to do. Well, how's he going to get along with others? <clears throat> okay, I don't know. As long as he minds, he'll be getting along with me, right? That, that was everybody's big worry, Ooh, right? And, uh, but what I found is this. 
and this is my last ditch on homeschooling. My children could talk to elderly people and people their own age just as good as, see, they, they had friends outside their own age group, right? And, but with that said, he, he, he was scared of the Lord's diet. People were scared that we were isolating our children because you know why? Everybody else was at the king's slot down at the public school, right? And what we had to offer was oats. What we had to offer was very, very basic. You know, the first year we homeschooled, Adam was the only one schooling at that time. We bought his books at a yard sale. That's, that's the money we had to do it with. That's all that we had. That's what we did. And you know what? It worked fine. <laughs> but what we feed our children is very, very important. And so Daniel says, I don't want none of it. The world responded with their usually response. You're going to starve to death. Daniel, you're going to look bad when you come in before the king. And it's all going to be my fault. Verse 11 then Daniel said to, Mel, uh, to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had sent, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. In other words, give me the desire, diet designed for God's man just for ten days. Just give me ten days. You know what the diet God subscribed to you is very bland compared to most religion in the modern day. We don't have a laser light show. We don't have people turning cartwheels. We don't have people jumping up and down and foaming. Very bland diet, isn't it? You go to some of the other crazy places, it, 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 I mean, it never ceases to amaze me. But it's a bland diet, but it's a good diet. And you know the rest of the story. They ate the pulp for 10 days, and they looked better than everybody else. They looked more healthy, they were bright-eyed, and they were ready to go in the things of God. Now, just as a reminder, they ate God's food, and they progressed in God's ways, and you see what that got all four of them, right? He got three into the fiery furnace. And he got old Daniel and the lions did. But you know what? All four of them walked out unharmed, did they not? That's a good, good diet. That's something that, that will help you when times get tough. So I ask you, what's on the plate? What are you going to eat this year? What's going to be different this year than last year. You know what? <clears throat> to totally including myself, I want it to be less of this. Yesterday, I picked up some tin that I wanted to pick up off my place for 25 years. And I was, uh, I got it done. First load, Bella wanted to go with me. And the first thing she said, Daddy, where's your phone? And I said, I guess I left it in the house. And it really surprised me. Two things. Number one, that's how she knew something wasn't right. <laughs> and the second thing, how much I got work I got done without it. And so the rest of the day, and I'm telling you this, it, it, it laid there by the landline all day. And I got some stuff done. You see, get, give up this. Give up the TV. Get, give the Lord just one more extra hour a day. And I guarantee you, you will be blessed for it.